This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That is the theme of our worship in this entire year of ministry here at St. Matthew, to rejoice always. And we do rejoice that you are here today to worship with us on this very special day as we premiere and record this worship service. It is June the 25th. That is the actual day that the Augsburg Confession was presented to the Holy Roman Emperor and the Roman Catholic Church. This is what makes us Christians here at St. Matthew uniquely Lutheran. They asked us, what do we believe, teach, and confess? And so we read to them what has been called now the Augsburg Confession about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the forgiveness of sins. And so everything that we do here at St. Matthew and across the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, is pretty much based in the Augsburg Confession and the other books of confession in the Book of Concord. And that is the day today, June 25th, that we celebrate that. This is also the day that we celebrate the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And so the theme of our worship will be peace, shalom, true peace, as it is given to us, not fake peace, but true peace, based on the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 10. We have a couple words of announcement, uh, matters of importance for you before we begin worship today. Uh, we, our Vacation Bible School right now is going to go off as planned on July the 20th to the 24th for little children, the preschool age through the fourth grade. So if you would like to register for Team Jesus Vacation Bible School here at St. Matthew, please contact the church office. You can give us a call at 847-438-7709 or you can stop by our website at www.stmatts.net, stmatts.net, for more information and to register your son or daughter for VBS. And if you have more information, you would like more information, give Kristen Gierke a call. That is our youth director here at St. Matthew. We also have uh, the Cool Food Pantry in Waukegan is in need of food items, especially bread. And so every month we gather food items here at St. Matthew. So you can bring those in when you either come for drive-in worship or you can drop them off during the week uh, at the church office vestibule uh, outside of door 12. And especially bread items and we will take those down to the Cool Food Pantry at the end of the month. We are excited to be able to announce that we will be back in the sanctuary on July the 26th, God willing, for a nine o'clock worship service. We are limited to 100 people. So if you'd like to know more information about that, that's the end of July, the last Sunday in July, contact the church office. We will have a drive-in service in the car, in the parking lot, on July 5th and July the 19th. And finally, I wanna remind the members of St. Matthew that are 18 and older and that are eligible to vote in our congregation, that we do have a voters meeting scheduled for August the 9th. That's the second Sunday in August. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. This is the contemporary worship service, so we will begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our first two songs are Sing a Victory and Your Words, and may the Lord bless our worship today. The 
mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends And I know how this story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good.
First reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 28, beginning at verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our second reading is taken from the epistle to the Romans, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. 
Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I once was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good in order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. And our third reading is from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. We start right off with our heart work. So let us say that together. Jesus Jesus said, said, Do do not not think that I have come to bring bring peace to the the earth. earth. I I have have not come come to bring bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. It's great to be with you today to talk to you about God. But I want to introduce you to somebody, okay? This is Hananiah. Do you think Hananiah is a good person? You might think so. He's smiling, right? And people who smile, they're good people, right? But Hananiah has a problem. Hananiah tells lies. Lies are not the truth. He tells people what they want to know. He wants to have all kinds of friends. And Hananiah tells lies. Right, Hananiah? Yeah. You have something to tell me? Really? Hananiah says that he, God, is going to give you a house full of candy and cookies, that you don't have to pick up all your toys, and you don't even have to listen to mom and dad. He says that's what God says. Is that what God says? No, I don't think so. You see, even though a person may smile, if they tell you to do what God doesn't want you to do, that is a sin. Now, in the first reading that Pastor Blonsky read, there was a prophet named Hananiah, and he told the people lies, saying that God told him to say it. You see, God's people had been bad, and God was going to punish his people. But Hananiah said, oh, everything's going to be just fine. God told me to tell you that. But Jeremiah, the other one, had a frowny face 
because he had to speak the truth to the people and tell them that what they were doing was not right. He had to tell them about their sin so that they could repent and be God's people once again. Now, it's great to have someone who smiles and tells the truth, but in this case, let's listen to Jeremiah because he tells us the truth in God's love so that we don't stay in our sin, but that, that we receive the forgiveness that Jesus won for us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you, thank you for being our savior, for being our savior. Help us, help us to always want, to always want to listen to you, to listen to you, regardless, regardless what others may say. Of what others may say. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we and pray. And all God's children say, amen. amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has
of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is so much conflict in our world today. All you have to do is turn on the news and see how many headlines are about violence and rioting and disaster. Included in that is death and conflict. We all know that it's not how it's supposed to be and it even affects us inside, in our inner being. Just six months ago, we celebrated the birth of the Prince of Peace, Jesus. And yet here we are surrounded by conflict. Conflict between nations, conflict between people, conflict in our families, and even conflict in our own being. Didn't Jesus come to bring peace to all this mess? When do I get to stop fighting? When do I get to stop struggling? Where is true peace? Well, for what exactly are you asking? Fake peace or true shalom? Peace is comfortable. No one likes to come home to a family where everybody's constantly arguing. It forces the person to be constantly on edge, ready to go to war and have it all start back up. It's exhausting. And so we chase after peace, even if it means ignoring things that we know we shouldn't. Peace is also safety. When things change, it unsettles us. This is what keeps a person trapped in an abusive relationship, for example. They know it's wrong and broken and unhealthy, but it is familiar and it's safe in its own way. So we refuse to change, even knowing that what exists is draining us of our life. But that's not real peace, is it? We can avoid talking about it, but we haven't really figured anything out. Have we? It's miserable, even if we tiptoe around every topic. It's plain that it isn't what real peace is supposed to be. It's no use pretending. When you do that, you live in fear. Things covered are eventually uncovered, and while we wait, they own us. It looks like peace, but it is fake. And fake peace comes at a cost. How many of us have a relationship where we know things aren't as they should be, but we don't know how to change it? And so we compromise. We live and let live in the name of peace. But fake peace brings about death. As long as we view life primarily about pursuing the appearance of peace, we live a lie. As long as our friendships are about getting along instead of loving discussion, they are mere shadows of what they have been intended to be. And if our relationship with God is primarily about concealing our sin from Him and from others and ourselves, we can never find real peace. Jesus came not to bring that kind of peace, but a sword. Real peace is the ancient Hebrew concept of shalom. True shalom is not just a matter of not actively fighting in the moment. It's about having restored relationships. True shalom is about a wholeness in body, in mind, in spirit, and with relationships with God and with each other. And until that time, we can't find real peace. God knows that true shalom begins in dealing with the broken relationships that divide us from Him and isolate us from one another. 
That's why Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. He came to cut through that fake peace and all the lies and to give us true shalom. Taking a stand brings about a sword. Speaking the truth will bring you into conflict with the lies that embrace us. Don't believe me? Just try it. Say, for example, every life is precious or sacred from conception to natural death. Say that human sexuality is a gift of God to be enjoyed in the context of marriage between a man and a woman. Proclaim in any sense that there's an absolute right and an absolute wrong to the universe, that some actions bring about joy and happiness and life, and that others bring about death, chaos, and destruction, and watch the sparks start to fly. Our world is comfortable with its lies, but for real peace to take root, the lives must first be challenged and revealed for what they are. And that conflict, that sword, does bring about true peace, shalom. It's only in the power of the Holy Spirit that you and I are able to confront the lies we know, that ultimately things are not how they're supposed to be in our relationship with God, and our relationship with each other. We've done things that we should not have done, and we've said things that we know we shouldn't have said. And sometimes the things that own us are because we didn't act, didn't do that thing that we should have, or we had that moment when we should have spoken and we did not. There's simply no peace in our world, in our relationships, or in ourselves. And we extend that relation sometimes in our thoughts about God. How could God love someone as broken as I am? And that is the greatest lie of all. That somehow we've done too much or we've said too little for God to love us. That somehow we've pushed it one too many times and are too fundamentally broken even to begin to make peace with God. And there is truth in that. We can't. We can't make peace with God on our own. We try and we fall short. So some of us settle for the fake peace, where we just ignore the whole thing, though underneath it all, we know that it's not really peace at all. But here is where the sword cuts. God loves you and me too much to leave us with this fake peace. So instead, God makes real peace, true shalom, with you and me. God sent his son to this world of skinned knees and broken hearts, not just to bring a sword to cut through the fake peace this world seeks, but to establish true shalom peace in the inner being. The Son of God, of God, Christ Jesus, took our flesh and lived perfectly the life you and I cannot. Then the Son, Christ Jesus, fell on the sword, took the nails and the spear, the death on the cross, to himself. For all those reasons that are anything but peace with God, and are anything but peace with those around us. Now he calls us by name in our baptism. And week after week, he seeks to feed us through his holy word and his broken body and precious blood. We do not have to be good enough, worthy enough, or able enough to make peace with God because God has already made peace with us. This weekend, we are celebrating confirmation, the confirmation of our youth. It is a 
reassurance. It is a confession on their part of what they received in their baptism. And they receive, again, the blessing, the first blessing in their baptism. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins. May he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. So now when in the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I confront the lies of fake peace, something remarkable happens. When we permit the Spirit of God to help us lovingly deal with things that we've been brushing aside and from which we've been hiding, everyone involved is set free. It is then we exchange that fake peace for true shalom given to us by Christ. And he gives it to you and to me through his perfect life, through his innocent death, through his triumphant resurrection with the promise of eternal life in heaven one day. May that peace, that shalom, be yours in your inner being, both now and forevermore. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in the love of God as he gives you this shalom. Amen. Our service continues now as we stand to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We would like you to be a part of our mission and ministry here at St. Matthew, and you can do that in a very interesting way. You can support this mission and ministry through your offerings and through your tithes. Members of St. Matthew, you have made a vow our, on our last consecration day, last uh, year, uh, to support this ministry. But we're, we would like all to be involved in that. You know, the psalmist writes to make a vow to the Lord. Make your vows to the Lord and fulfill them. That's Psalm 76, verse 11. And that is what we try to do here at St. Matthew, to use the resources that God has already given to us so that his word may be proclaimed powerfully throughout the whole world, starting right here in Hawthorne Woods. So you can bring your offering to the church office. You can do that. Uh, you can do that by bringing your offering when we have our drive-in communion service or our drive-in uh, worship services. You can mail in your offerings. You can use the PayPal feature so it's online on our website. It's a secure portal. You can also set up automatic, automatic withdrawal. Uh, from your bank account. So with doing that, we give praise to God for all that he has given to us so that others may know the peace that we ourselves know from the Prince of Peace. The Lord be with you and also with you. Together let us pray to the Lord. Almighty, Almighty God, God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving, rejoicing always, because you love us and sent Jesus to be our Savior, our promised and prophesied Prince of Peace. Fill us with the peace that surpasses understanding. Fill us with the peace that will never end. Fill us with true shalom peace. Not the peace the world gives, which is fake peace that doesn't last and hasn't cost. Give us the free peace that Jesus paid for with his life. Peace with you, and may it spill over in our lives to bring peace to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have given to us. Special days, but also 
giving us special people. We are thankful for Alexander Joseph Acosta, who will become your child through the waters of baptism. And we are thankful for the confirmants, the youth that will make their profession of faith in confirmation this weekend. John Balek, Shane Clausen, Rory Dwyer, Mia Field, Ryan LaCroix, Dylan Seaworth, and Sierra Stan. Bless them, Lord, that they may continue to make a bold profession of faith with all that they will see and hear in this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we are thankful for the congregation you have provided for us and continue to bless us with. We pray for the leaders of this congregation, especially those who make up the church council. John Kelly, Dean Stewart, Randy Anderson, Diane Villarreal, and all the board members of the various boards and ministries that take care of the day-to-day -day and yearly operation of this congregation to bring you glory and your word to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we ask to you to end this pandemic of COVID-19 and all illnesses. We ask you to end the violence and the rioting and the racism in our country so that we may all truly be united states of America and be able to give you praise and glory and to tell others the good news of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Father, we ask that you would be with those who are ill and have requested our prayer. Darlene Meyer, who is undergoing surgery in the hospital. For members of St. Matthew, who need your healing touch, Kristen Skinner, Marvin Sneller, Bob and Penny Martins, Kristen Bassler, Kristen Peterson Wisher, Steve Schachmel, Huey Miller, Sandy Onelock, John Schachmel, and John Mueller. For friends of St. Matthew, who we have been asked to pray for, Becky Nall, Whitman Williams, Dorothy Yeager, Chase Olson, Michael Drover, Deb Ale, Jane, Ryan, and Michael Smith. For those who are homebound and cannot leave their homes, but are still awaiting a word from you, and especially this week, Dolores Kennedy. And finally, for those that we name in the quiet of our hearts and minds. We ask, Lord, that you would hear our prayers and give them healing where it is your will and according to your good pleasure. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. All these things for which you have asked us, we pray you to grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we are bold to call, your, call you Father and in whose name we pray, trusting in your mercy and confident that you will give answer to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God and the Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and preserve you. Amen. <laughs>
great thou art and sings my soul my Savior God to be how great thou art how great thou art when through the woods the forest glades I wander I hear the birds sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou art. But when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. Savior God to be, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to be, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Lord Christ will with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim God how great thou art man sings my soul my Savior God to me Oh! 